Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we're going to tackle cube maps and skyboxes. So before we jump into the video, I would like to take a quick minute and thank the partners of the channel. The partners are the highest tier support both on YouTube and Patreon. And they are Caden, Arslia, Gerboles Inc., Super Awesome, and Wen Shang. I'd also like to thank all the other fine folks that appear on the screen here. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. If you'd like to support the channel and support my work, feel free to have a look at the YouTube membership, or if you prefer Patreon, you can check out patreon.com slash Travis Vroman. So, cube maps and skyboxes. What are cube maps and what are skyboxes? So, a cube map is basically a texture or a series of textures that is arranged in a pattern such that it can be wrapped around a cube uh, for a particular use. And they are typically used for reflection maps and skyboxes. So a skybox is basically a just a simple cube, um, just a six-sided cube, and it uses a cube map to sort of fake a sky background. Um, and so you have, you know, your uh, a front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. And the way that a skybox basically works is typically you have uh, a very small cube map, but you will render that uh, in a way where it sort of moves along with the camera. And it appears that the skybox is infinitely away in distance, far away in distance, um, as you move around. So the skybox doesn't technically move while uh, everything else really does move. So um, there are two ways to actually tackle that. There is uh, what I just said, where you can sort of uh, render the skybox uh, just on its own, disable the depth buffer, and then uh, sync its movement to the camera. So that's w certainly one way of doing it. However, uh, the way that we're going to do it is we are actually going to do it in a separate render pass uh, because that gives us a little bit more control over it and I find it tends to work a little bit better. Um, so we don't have to worry about uh, any of the jitter effects that can come from trying to sync it with the camera's movement. And so uh, what we're going to do is we are first going to implement Skyba or we're first going to implement cube maps rather and then we are going to use those cube maps to uh, implement a skybox. So the first thing that we're going to need is we are going to need some textures. And so I happen to have uh, some textures here that I've pulled off the net. Um, so I'm going to paste them in our folder here. And these are the textures here. So we have uh, a skybox back, uh, down, front, left, uh, right, and then up. And I've gone ahead and included a license here. Uh, that just uh, says who this is by and where the skybox is actually from. Um, and then uh, all we need to do is uh, basically just make sure that that's included for now. This is only a temporary skybox, um, and, and the use of this texture is only going to be temporary. Um, it's just sort of to illustrate how this works. Eventually, we're going to have a skybox that is sort of programmatic and dynamic uh, with fancy things like clouds and uh, sunlight and things like that. But to get started, uh, we are going to just use static images. Um, and that'll give us uh, a basic skybox to work with and add a little bit of realism to our scene. So uh, we have the skybox assets that are added here. So that's the first step, first and foremost. And uh, after this, uh, we're really going to uh, just kind of step through and implement uh, all the changes that we need to do. So the Quick list of changes are uh, we're going to need to add a new render pass because we're going to be handling the skybox and its own render pass. Uh, it's also going to have its own shader, uh, which for now isn't going to do much of anything fancy, but we are going to enhance it. So we want this shader to act completely different uh, from anything else. Um, and then since we have uh, a, uh, a shader, that means obviously we'll need a shader config to go with that. Um, and then we will also need to enhance our texture system a little bit to handle um, generating and loading uh, cube maps. And we'll have to make some, uh, some adjustments to our application, 
uh, and the renderer itself to actually support uh, this type of rendering. So uh, one of the first things that I want to do is uh, I think I'm actually going to start with the shader level of things. Um, just so that uh, we can kind of get that out of the way and then move on to um, to the actual code last. So uh, in uh, assets, I've already pasted the textures here, so we, we already uh, see those in here. But now we actually need to go into our shaders and we need to go ahead and create our um, GLSL uh, shader files as well as our shader config files. So I'm gonna start off with creating uh, a new file and we're going to call this uh, built-in uh, dot, uh, let's go with uh, skybox shader dot frag dot glsl. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'm also going to create a vertex shader as well. So I'm just going to rename this to dot vert dot glsl. And uh, the shader itself mostly entails things that we've already seen. So the fragment shader is actually really, really simple uh, with a couple of key changes. So um, the first thing that we have is we have a vector three texture coordinate. So uh, this is actually going to use the direction of the camera to map to the cube map in terms of where the actual texture coordinates are. Um, and this is, is, um, is how you actually deal with texture coordinates on a cube map. It's actually 3D texture coordinates. Um, and then uh, we also, uh, as before, we have uh, our output vector of, uh, of out color. Um, we have a single diffuse map here, uh, but our diffuse map is a little bit different. It's not a, um, a typical sampler as we've used before. We have a new sampler cube. Um, and so in this case, um, our sampler is a sampler cube type, which means we're gonna have to also support that. Um, but we only have one of them. However, because of the way that we have our descriptor set up, uh, we are going to treat this as an array, but it's just going to be an array of one. So all we're gonna do here is we are going to say uh, out color is equal to a texture of the sampler, sample diffuse, which is here, and uh, it's going to use texture coordinate. So textures uh, can also use 3D coordinates, uh, 3D texture coordinates to, um, to handle uh, cube maps. So that is the main difference here. Uh, everything else is pretty pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So uh, that's all there is for the fragment shader. Uh, the next thing is the vertex shader. And the vertex shader for now is also very simple. So it's going to take in our same layout for our vertex 3D. So we're not changing that at all. Um, even though we're not technically using all of this right now, um, we don't want to have to create a new format uh, just for this, at least not yet. Uh, we may do that uh, in, an, in a later optimization pass, but for right now, uh, it's not really necessary. So uh, we are going to have a global uniform object that uh, has our projection and our view. And uh, we are also uh, going to output a texture coordinate, but we are not going to use lo um, local uniforms in this. So uh, we're only using global uniforms, which means that we're actually going to have to make some changes to our uniform system uh, to support only using these. Um, so there are some changes we're going to have to make to that. Uh, our main function basically takes the texture coordinate uh, as the in position. So the position of the, the vertex or um, of the, the current uh, vertex that we're, we're working with in this shader is going to be the texture coordinate. And then that gets used um, in the fragment shader and interpolated um, as, uh, as the texture coordinate. So that's just a pass through. And then our GL position works just like before. So we have our global UBO projection, our global UBO view, and we do not have a model matrix because uh, our model matrix is uh, essentially an identity matrix. Uh, it's going to be placed in the center of the world and it's always going to be rendered on a separate pass and we're not going to um, move it around at all. So that is the very definition of a, um, an identity matrix, which means we don't need it at all. So we only take a projection and a view matrix and then we multiply it by the uh, vertex uh, position. And that is all there is to the skybox shader vertex, uh, the vertex shader rather. 
So the next thing that we're going to need in here is we are also going to need a shader config file. So uh, we're going to call this shader dot built in uh, built in, uh, and then we'll call it uh, dot skybox dot shader config. Okay, and uh, this is going to contain uh, some pretty basic configuration. Uh, it's going to look very similar to other things that we've done before. So um, we are adding a couple of properties though. So uh, one thing that we need to add to our shader is the cull mode, and that is for front faces or back faces. And an important thing to note about a skybox is that it is rendered inside out. So uh, whereas normal geometry, we are sort of on the outside looking in, uh, with a skybox, you are in the inside looking out. So we actually don't want to call back faces. We want to render the back faces in that, in that case. And so um, in this case, we're going to set a new property called call mode to uh, front so that we call the front faces and not the back faces. So it still allows us to use a standard cube um, and we don't have to um, worry about, you know, creating one with a uh, backwards winding order or something like that. Uh, here we have the name of the shader, uh, the render pass, which is uh, just render pass built in skybox. We're going to go ahead and create that. Um, our stages are vertex and fragment. Um, our stage files are here that we've already created. Um, and right now we have uh, use instance is one and use local is zero, meaning um, we are not going to be using these. Um, and in fact, uh, we're more than likely going to enhance uh, our system to not even need these uh, because we can kind of tell um, by what uniforms we have down here whether or not those are used. So that's another improvement I think I'm going to make uh, sort of while we're in here. So our attributes are all the same as we've discussed. Our uniform um, basically has our projection and our view and then our cube texture is our local and that's the only thing. So we don't actually have a local uniform buffer that's needed for this. Um, we only have a, uh, a uniform sampler. Okay. So uh, that is our shader config. Um, again, it mostly consists of things that we've already kind of seen. All right, so let me just check my notes here uh, to see what is probably the best place to start at. And I am thinking probably the best place is going to be the Vulkan types INL file. So let's go ahead and start there. And we'll go ahead and go to our definition of our uh, Vulkan descriptor set config. So uh, Vulkan descriptor set config. There we go. So uh, this is the configuration for a individual descriptor set, and we actually need to add something to this uh, because right now uh, we have this sort of hard-coded binding uh, that we're using uh, for uh, each descriptor set, and that's not necessarily the most flexible thing. Um, and so we are actually going to make that a little bit more flexible as well while we're in here. So we're gonna have a sampler binding index uh, that gets uh, added to this so that uh, in the case where we don't actually have any uh, uniform variables aside from samplers, we don't need to create uh, a uniform buffer for that and use it. Um, we don't need to create descriptors for that and use it. Uh, so this will uh, be, in our case, it'll be uh, one for our, um, our other two shaders. So for the world and the UI, um, that index will be one, but for our skybox shader, this is gonna wind up actually being zero because uh, we don't have um, a sampler there, or a, uh, a, uh, a uniform there. So um, the next thing that we're going to need uh, is actually in uh, the, I guess it's going to be in the Vulkan shader config. And uh, that is going to wind up being something that we're going to call face call mode. And uh, we haven't actually created this yet, uh, so we'll have to come back uh, for that. But uh, this is where we're going to set that option as to whether we're going to call the front face or the back face or what have you. So we need that. 
And then uh, a little bit uh, further down, we have uh, the Vulcan shader. Let me just find that, here we go. And so we're gonna add some more properties to this as well. So um, what we're gonna wanna do is keep counts of our global uniforms and our global uniform samplers, as well as our instance uniforms and our instance uniform samplers. And then we're gonna also have a local uniform count. So we're gonna keep counts of all of these things. So as we're actually adding the uniforms uh, to the shader, we're going to keep those counts. And those counts are gonna help us determine uh, what descriptor sets we actually need. Okay, so uh, that is actually it for our Vulcan types. Uh, the next thing I'm actually thinking might be a good idea is probably, let me just check uh, my notes here. So probably uh, renderer types INL I'm thinking. So uh, renderer types INL. Uh, we will start all the way at the top of the file. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to define a new uh, shader name. And that is going to be our built-in shader name for our skybox. So we're gonna call that built-in built -in shader name skybox. And that's going to be our shader.builtin.skybox. And the next thing that we're actually gonna want to do is down here uh, where we are actually creating a shader. Uh, let me just find it here. Shader create. Uh, one thing that we're gonna want to do is we're actually gonna wanna pass the shader configuration here. Um, and uh, we're gonna do this because uh, we need to actually uh, change the way that our uniforms and where our uniforms are actually created and added. So I'm going to um, pass in a const pointer to uh, shader config and we're just going to call this config and uh, obviously that means we need to add a parameter here and that means we'll have to update that on the front uh, and the back end as well um, but uh, we need we're going to need that configuration object so uh, we'll come back to that, but uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to take a look at our known types. So we have uh, known types for our render views. Uh, so that's going to be right here. So right now we have uh, a render view, um, known type world and known type UI. We have another known type now that is of type skybox. Um, and again, we're going to enhance this as we continue. So. Um, we need a, uh, a known type about that because it's gonna be handled very differently from anything else. Uh, one more thing that we need to add to this is, uh, I think it's here towards the bottom. So we have our mesh packet data. Uh, we also are going to need our uh, something uh, different for skybox packet data. And this is going to take uh, a pointer to a skybox object, which we've not created yet. Um, so, uh, all this is going to do is um, just pass a pointer to a skybox, which we can then use within our view um, for our skyboxes to render a skybox. So um, again, we haven't created that yet. Uh, we will get there. Okay, so uh, that should be it for render types right now. Um, we're gonna kind of have to jump around because this, this code sort of um, is it requires a lot of changes in a lot of different places. So we're gonna be kind of saying, you know, hey, we have this coming and then we're going to uh, be creating it very soon after that. But, um, all right, anyway, uh, so uh, let's see, should we go ahead and create, I don't know if I wanna do the view yet. Um, let's go ahead and make a quick change to Vulcan image uh, because uh, this actually has uh, some changes that we're gonna need uh, to make for skyboxes. So um, this is sort of a disconnected change from the other stuff. So uh, let's look at Vulcan image H first and we'll go to the top here. And what we're gonna do is uh, first, uh, we're going to change uh, the image type here. So we have um, Let's see, we have the type of the image. Actually, that's probably, that's probably fine. 
No. Uh, we actually want to change uh, the text, this image type to texture type. Um, so we have uh, texture type, which actually we haven't uh, actually created yet. Should we do that first? We probably should do that first. Let's go ahead and let's define texture type first, I think, because uh, without that, um, this next section is actually not going to make that much sense. So, um, in fact, yeah, let's do, uh, let's go to resource types dot H because there are a few things that we're going to have to define here. Um, and these are all the things that we've actually kind of run into so far. So, um, we have, here somewhere our image resource data. Um, image resource data. So this is probably where we're going to add uh, the first couple things. So one of the first things that we're going to need is we're going to need a new structure for image resource params because when we load an image resource, uh, we're going to need to pass some parameters as to how that source gets loaded. So if we look at the uh, image loader, one thing that we're doing is we are always making the assumption in our STBI load or our STB image load that we want to flip vertically on load. And that is true 90% of the time. However, for skyboxes, uh, it is actually not true because skyboxes are a, uh, a Y uh, down um, coordinate system. And that's sort of an old thing that's left over from OpenGL. Um, and so if you're ever having issues with your skybox rendering upside down, it's probably because you also flipped the image um, on the Y axis as well. And so uh, in the case of a skybox, we're actually not gonna wanna do that. And so we need some way to tell the loader about that. Um, and that way to tell that is going to be our image resource params, which also means we're gonna have to modify our loaders to be able to take in uh, those arguments. So uh, we have that. Uh, we also have um, something in here that we've referred to already uh, called call mode. So this is face call mode. So right now the default um, uh, or the zero option is to call no faces. So that means we render both front and back faces. Um, the mode that we use most of the time is uh, front call or um, back, back call facing and um, back face calling rather. Uh, and this means that uh, we render front faces and we call back faces. Uh, the one that the cube map needs, or the skybox rather, needs uh, is front face calling. So we have a mode for that. And then we also have a mode where we call both. Um, I'm not sure if we're ever actually gonna need this, but uh, every renderer API supports it, so we should too. Um, so uh, that is that. Um, and then uh, let's see, um, probably after our texture flag bits, we have uh, an enumeration that we need to add for uh, texture type. And this is gonna be expanded as we add more different types of textures. Right now we have a texture type 2D, which are just our standard uh, texture map. And then we have uh, a new texture type for texture type cube. And this is for cube maps. Uh, and so uh, we definitely need uh, that definition. And since we have a texture type on texture itself, we are going to include that type information for every texture so that we can look at the texture and determine uh, what its type is. The next thing uh, that we have here is our texture use. So uh, we actually have a normal map as the last one and we need to add one more. Uh, where we can say uh, that the texture will be used as a cube map. So we have sort of our default uh, specular and normals here, but we also now have one as a cube map. And that may wind up changing um, or being renamed to something else, depending on how we wind up using it down the road. But for now, uh, that's sort of the most direct uh, meaning behind that. So that's the one I'm gonna stick with. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have a one more structure that we actually have to um, create and that is going to be towards the bottom here so I'm thinking probably 
right here after mesh is where we're going to put our skybox structure. So our skybox structure holds a texture map or a cube map. It holds a pointer to some geometry, an instance ID, and a renderer frame number. Uh, and this is synced to the renderer's frame number. Uh, so when the material has actually been applied that frame, um, we use that. And note, we do not actually have a material here because we're not going to be creating a skybox material. That doesn't really make sense. A skybox is gonna have all sorts of other properties that aren't really material related. And so our pipeline for this is going to be different to support that. So um, instead of uh, having a material that uh, keeps track of the render frame number uh, or a shader that keeps track of that, uh, we are actually gonna track that on the skybox. Okay, so one final change that I wanna make is in our shader config. So that is shader attribute config, uniform config, shader config, here we go. So uh, right now we have this use instances and use local. And like I said, we're, we're now keeping the counts of those things. So we actually really don't need those anymore um, because we can just look at the count and if the count is not zero, then we know we have it, right? Um, and so we're gonna get rid of those and replace it with our face call mode. Uh, because we do actually need that at the shader level. Uh, because when we go to actually create the shader uh, pipeline, it is gonna need to know what uh, face call mode we wanna use. Okay. So um, that will do it for our resource types. So, now I'm thinking that we should probably go ahead and update our resource loaders because our resource system actually needs the ability to take in parameters. Um, and I think that's probably going to wind up being the best way to handle it. So let's go to our resource system. And actually we're probably, let's see, resource system config. Here's our resource loader. So our resource loader is gonna need a additional uh, param passed in. Um, and this is just going to come after name. We're going to pass in a void pointer to params. And uh, ultimately the resource loader itself should know um, how to process those parameters that are passed to it. Um, so we're just gonna use a void pointer here and then cold cast that internally. So we'll go ahead and add a comment here for that. And um, that should be all we need to do at least at this level, but since we are actually calling load here uh, by our resource system load, that means that it also needs to be able to take in parameters. So uh, we're gonna put this right after resource type. And of course, uh, we are going to come in here and put in another comment here. And it's important to note that uh, parameters um, should be passed here, but we can also use zero for loaders that don't actually take parameters. So um, it's not gonna break kind of what we have going on um, currently. Uh, and then one other thing is uh, since we have uh, our parameters here for load, we also want to add that for load custom. Even though we're not using this yet, we want it to, um, to be able to work out of the box uh, once we actually get to the point of uh, using a custom loader. So um, we have that, uh, and that is our, um, our resource system updates on the front. And so what I'm gonna do is take a copy of this and go into the C file. And uh, we're gonna come up here to, let's see, our resource system load, and we're going to add the parameter here and here, right? So load custom and load, uh, which also means our internal load function is going to need to be enhanced as well. So that is going to uh, probably, I'm thinking it might be best to go ahead and add that after the loader, but before the out resource. So we need to add it there and then also the function prototype here at the top of the file. And that also means that uh, we need to come back here to our load and pass in params here and params here. 
and I believe that's actually all the changes that we need to make at that level. Um, but that also means that we're going to have to go through all of our types and add uh, this as well. So all of our, um, our resource loaders, uh, we're actually going to have to go through and add um, that extra parameter to all of those. Uh, I, I always try to avoid um, making these changes uh, at this level, um, you know, interface changes, but sometimes it's just unavoidable. So um, our text loader uh, should be uh, just adding uh, params there. Um, so that should be fine just in the C file, so that's good. Um, we will also need to, uh, let's see, we will need to go to our, uh, let's do the mesh loader next. So that is going to be mesh loader load, uh, and that's going to be right here. So we have our params there. And again, uh, our mesh loader is not actually going to use that. Um, our material loader is also going to take it in, but not use it. Um, our image loader uh, is going to go ahead and take that in, but our image loader is actually going to use this. So uh, we have our, um, our params there, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, get a casted version of this. So we're going to hold cast params to typed params, and we'll have our uh, image resource params here. And what we're going to do is instead of hard coding this to true, we are going to say typed params flip y. And that way we have that flexibility um, to either flip or not flip depending on what is actually going on. Uh, one other thing here is I actually want to remove just a little bit of dead code because we don't actually need that anymore. And the other thing is I actually noticed uh, down here in our unload that we were not uh, freeing the resource data pixels. So we actually need to call STBI image free on this or otherwise we wind up leaking that memory and we don't want to do that. So um, we're just going to go ahead and fix that bug while we're in here. And uh, our binary loader is also going to need this. So I'm going to take this and just copy and go here to our binary loader and paste that there. Again, it doesn't actually use it. And the last thing that's going to use it is our, uh, our shader loader. So we are going to add params there. And then uh, we're going to change up our shader loader a little bit as well um, to take a look at these new properties that we have um, that we've added. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get rid of use instances and use local because those don't uh, exist anymore. And we're, instead we're going to say resource data, oops, uh, coal mode. We are going to default that to face uh, coal mode back. So that's just a reasonable default. If we do not provide a configuration, it is going to default to back face calling. Um, which makes it uh, compatible with all of the um, the shaders that we've written thus far. So uh, the other thing that we're going to do is come down here to where we're loading in our use instances um, and use local. And so we're actually going to uh, nuke both of those. Uh, so let's see, let me just grab the, so this is use instance, so we want that one gone and use local gone. And we're going to replace that with a different one for call mode. So this is our new property that we're going to read in. And it's either going to look for front, front and back with un underscores, just like this, uh, or none. And uh, the since the default is back, um, if you provide back here, it'll just default to that because it's already set to that um, further up here. So um, there's no need to actually do a string compare for that. If it's set to anything else, it's just gonna default to back. All right, so uh, that is it for our shader loader. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to um, modify some of our systems uh, because we've actually now broken some of our systems. 
Uh, so our material system is going to need one small update where we load in uh, the resource here. We have this resource system load now requires params. So we're just going to add a zero to that because we don't need it. So uh, that fixes our material system. Uh, our render view system uh, is going to need to be updated as well. I think I'm going to come back to that though um, because we don't actually have our render view created just yet. Um, let's see. I'm actually thinking we probably should go ahead and make some updates to our Vulcan pipeline next. I think that actually makes the most sense. Uh, so that's relatively disconnected from everything else. So um, uh, Vulcan pipeline .h, we'll start with that. Uh, so we have our pipeline create. Uh, we are going to be adding yet another parameter to this. So uh, right here after scissor, but before the other booleans, uh, we are going to add face call mode. And then uh, we are gonna go to the C file and add face call mode to the same place in there. And then uh, a little bit further down, uh, what we're gonna do is look for where we are setting the call mode, which right now is uh, defaulted to always use back face calling. And we're gonna nuke this line and replace it with a switch statement of the passed in call mode. And so here we'll say, uh, if the call mode is none, we'll use VK call none. Um, for front face, back face, or front and back. So we support all of our options here. And that's just a simple uh, pass through for that. Uh, and that is all we need to do um, in terms of the pipeline. So uh, thankfully, not a whole heck of a lot there. Um, did, we, did we update the comment here though? I don't think we did. No. So that needs to be added right there after scissor. Okay, so uh, that is Vulkan Graphics Pipeline Create updated. Uh, let's see, um, Vulkan Shader Utils needs a small update uh, because we have broken one thing in here because of our resource loader. So uh, right here where we're loading the uh, shader as a binary resource, uh, we just need to pass zero as the params there. So that fixes that. Uh, the swap chain, the Vulcan swap chain, uh, needs a small update. So we have, um, actually before we do that, uh, Vulcan image is actually need to be updated. So Vulcan image .h, we should probably uh, update that first. So our Vulcan image uh, is actually going to take the update that we are talking about, uh, where we have a texture type here. So we have uh, image type here. Um, I'm just gonna actually rename that to type uh, because it's not the image type anymore, it's just the type. And we're gonna say the type of texture instead of that. Um, and then we'll say, oops, I need to spell that right. Uh, provides hints to creation. So that's pretty, pretty important. Uh, the other thing that I wanna do is uh, update the width and height. So uh, we wanna say for cube maps, this is for each side of the cube. Um, and that is for the width and height, just so that's plainly obvious uh, what exactly that's doing. Uh, we're also going to want to change uh, image type to texture type on all of these other calls. So we have, um, we've already changed it for uh, Vulcan image create. We wanna change it for the view create too. Um, so that's going to just be called type. Um, we're going to, let's see, I don't even think we actually had, amazingly, we didn't actually have an argument in here. We had format, oops, that should probably be, wait, what did I do here? I think I replaced the wrong one. Uh, that's image, yeah, this should be an additional property that's added here. So we have um, context, type, format, image, and aspect flags. So um, we've added the uh, type there. So we'll go ahead and add a comment for that as well. Um, and that should just be type actually, it shouldn't be texture type. So uh, we've added that there. Um, 
And then we're going to do a uh, transition layout. Uh, that's going to be added right after the context as well. In fact, uh, it's also going to be here. And uh, it's also, let's see, uh, we don't actually need to define it in destroy, so that's fine. Um, okay, so let me go ahead actually and copy this comment as well. So right before the command buffer on this one, um, and right here on this one. Okay, so we've made our changes here. Uh, next, we'll need to go to the implementation of this and add this parameter. So uh, right here, uh, this one is actually going to replace image type. So we're gonna say uh, texture type type there. And we're gonna come back and change that stuff, uh, but I wanna go ahead and add this parameter all the way down here first. So uh, we have type, uh, we have type, uh, whoops, that needs a comment after it. Uh, and then we have type again, and that should be it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get rid of some of our hard-coded stuff in here. So um, within the, um, the C file, we are going to uh, take our texture type and switch uh, what we're doing on a few of these things. So where we are setting our image type here, we're actually going to nuke this uh, because this is now going to be configurable. And uh, for right now, there's not a whole heck of a lot of options. So basically it says if the type is texture 2D or cube, um, then we're gonna use image type 2D. Uh, and we're putting this here, this is only a, a single switch statement. Um, yes, I get that. It's only basically a single case, but we are gonna be adding other types here. So this sort of scaffolds that flexibility for us. So this doesn't actually change anything functionally, but um, gives us what we need. I should point out that there is no Vulkan image type for uh, the cube. Uh, it basically treats a cube map as uh, a 2D texture. So um, there is no special image type for that as you might think that there might be. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to come down here to, uh, let's see, we have uh, our depth is one, our MIP levels is four, that should be fine. However, uh, our array layers is actually going to be a little bit different because cube maps, uh, this should be six, but if we are not on a cube map, it should be one. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna put some conditional code in here to set this instead, where if our type is equal to texture type cube, then use six because we technically have six textures to cover each side of our cube. So this is gonna be a six for cube maps, otherwise that will be one as what we had before. So we'll go ahead and format that. And then uh, a little bit further down, uh, currently we uh, are not actually setting any flags. So our image create info dot flags is gonna be zeroed out at this point, but if we are creating a cube map, uh, in other words, if we are using texture type cube, uh, we actually do need to set a flag on the create info where we're gonna say uh, it is cube map compatible. So we actually need to uh, make sure that that is set if it is a cube map. So we'll go ahead and get that in there. And then uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is a little bit further down here, we are creating a view, uh, which you can see has an error now. And so that needs to have type passed before format. Oops, type. Uh, so that's that. Uh, we've gone ahead and added type here, but we're not actually using it just yet. So our view uh, for right now is using uh, image view type 2D. And we have a to-do here to make this configurable. Now we're actually doing that. So we switch again on the type. Uh, if it is a cube, we actually do have a view type that is view type cube. So even though the texture type or the image type itself is a 2D texture for cubes, we actually need a, a specific cube map view for that. Uh, or otherwise, uh, the, the default is uh, a view type of 2D like what we had there before. So uh, that is uh, that. And then we're is, we are gonna make one more uh, change to this. So once again, if we have a cube map that we're dealing with, our uh, Vulkan image view needs to handle that as well. So our layer count right now is one. Uh, we actually want to switch on that 
So if we have a cube map, that is going to be six instead of one. Again, one for each side of the cube. All right, uh, next in our transition layout, uh, we have already passed in the texture type here. So the only thing that we actually need to do is again, this layer count for uh, our barrier needs to be one uh, in most of the cases, uh, unless it's a cube map, then it needs to be six. And finally, uh, copy from buffer right here. Uh, we have our layer count for our image subresource, and that is going to be the same thing. So um, if it's a cube map, it needs to be six, otherwise, it needs to be one. And that is all the changes that we need to make for Vulkan image. So uh, not terribly complicated, but at least it's, it's now a lot more uh, configurable than it was before. So uh, now we can actually swap swap to our swap chain. See what I did there? Uh, and we can make one tiny update here. Uh, so if we go to uh, where we are creating our swap chain, and we come down here to where we're making our images. Uh, let's see. Vulcan image create. Here we go right here. So where we're creating uh, this uh, depth texture here, uh, we need to change from this hard-coded uh, VK image type 2D, which is now not uh, really uh, valid because it wants a texture type. We need a texture type 2D. So we just need to swap that out. All right, um, let's see. So I think that is uh, all we need to change in terms of images to support our cube maps, at least for right now. So let's see, what is the next thing? I guess uh, there is, let's see. There's gonna be some changes on the front end we need to make but I think it might actually make sense to go ahead and set up the skybox view first. So I think that is actually what I'm going to do next. Um, yeah, I feel like that makes the most sense. So uh, let's go ahead and go to um, our renderer and views and create a new file. And we're going to call this uh, render view skybox and I'm just going to copy that and we'll create the H file and we'll go ahead and create the C file as well and the H file um, for the view looks pretty much exactly like the other views that we've seen uh, so we have a pragma once oops once and uh, of course we uh, include our defines um, our renderer types and then we have our uncreate destroy resize build packet and render. So this is all pretty standard stuff, so I'm not going to touch on that again. All right, so uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually uh, create the sort of meat and potatoes of our view here. And we're gonna start that off with our list of includes. So uh, our list of includes is gonna be our render view skybox, obviously our logger, memory, event, kmath, transform, uh, D-Array. Um, we may actually wind up not needing that. Um, uh, the material system, shader system, camera system, and render front end. Um, we may not wind up needing all these things, but uh, I just sort of copied this from one of the other views um, just to sort of speed things along a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna have to set up is the structure for our internal data. Uh, so right now we have a shader ID, um, our FOV, our near clip, our far clip, our projection matrix, our world camera. So this looks a lot like um, the world view so far. And then we have our projection location, our view location, and our cube map location. These locations are uniform locations in the shader. So remember, we don't have a, a material to actually hold that stuff for us. So we're gonna actually have to hold those things as part of the internal state here, which is fine. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and paste in our functions down here so that we can go ahead and fill these guys out. So let me just convert these to function definitions. All 
Yes, I could use a find and replace, but whatever. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we're going to do is obviously uh, a check to see if uh, self was provided. And of course, if self was not provided, we're going to error and return false uh, because that is just rubbish. We don't want to we don't want to handle that. So um, in our case, uh, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and allocate uh, space for our internal data. And then uh, we are going to make sure that we do not have any sort of custom shader name. Um, so by default, we're going to load shader built in skybox. Um, if we do not have that, then, um, or if we're, we're actually uh, loading in a custom shader name, we do that instead. So again, it's pretty uh, similar to what we've seen so far. The differences start here though. So the first thing uh, is obviously we grab the, uh, the ID and we store that off. We grab the projection location by calling shader uniform index. Um, and then uh, the projection, uh, we do the same for view and then we the same for cube texture. And uh, we are also going to set a few things here that are defaults that we really should be getting from co uh, configuration. Uh, this was the, the case in our other views as well. So it is something we're gonna have to address before too much longer, just not quite yet. And then uh, next we are going to um, go ahead and get uh, some default matrices built. Uh, so default perspective matrix, uh, because we're still gonna wanna use a per perspective matrix, um, projection matrix for um, for this, just as we do in the world. And then uh, we're gonna wanna get the default camera. And then uh, of course, if we get this far, we're gonna go ahead and return true. So uh, that is our creation code. Our destroy code is pretty simple, as you might have guessed. Uh, all we do is we make sure that self and self internal data exist. And then we go ahead and free uh, the memory for the internal data and zero it out. And our render um, skybox on resize is exactly what we've seen um, actually in the world. So I'm not gonna go into that. It does the exact same thing as the world. Again, we may wind up, uh, you know, maybe uh, quote unquote, uh, for lack of a better term, base classing this um, for a loose oop thing, because this is where that kind of might make sense. But for now, uh, we're not gonna bother. Where the difference really lies is uh, in the on build packet and the render. So uh, the first thing that we do to build the packet obviously is what we've done elsewhere to make sure that we have uh, all the parameters passed in that we need. We go ahead and cold cast our data to our skybox packet data, which just contains a pointer to our skybox. Uh, and we go ahead and set the out packet view to ourself. And then uh, we go ahead and set up our matrices. So uh, we copy over our projection view matrix. Uh, we also get the uh, world camera position. And then uh, we go ahead and we use the, um, oops, we use the packets extended data to hold our skybox data, which is just the packet data that's here. And then uh, we go ahead and return true. So uh, we're actually not doing any allocations on this. So we're, we're not gonna have to worry about uh, cleaning that one up. So the on render uh, isn't very complicated either. Uh, the first thing that that does is uh, obviously make sure that we have um, the internal data and we get the uh, shader ID. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and cold cast the uh, extended data um, in the packet to a skybox packet data, which will give us a pointer to our skybox. And now we're going to go ahead and iterate through all the render passes that are configured for this, which is only gonna be one, um, but we do want the ability to support multiple if we need that for some reason. So uh, we go ahead and grab a pointer to the render pass and then begin the render pass. Um, obviously if we fail that, then we bleat about it and return false. Uh, we are going to, just like in the world shader, we're going to use uh, the shader um, as needed. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we're gonna grab the view matrix, but we want to actually zero out the position of the camera. Um, and this is so that the skybox doesn't actually move. So um, the, as you move the camera around, its position is going to be, um, is going to be updated. Uh, but we actually want to zero out our copy of that view matrix because 
uh, we don't want the skybox to move with the camera. The camera is going to be rendered um, in the very center of the world first in a separate render pass, so we don't actually need to um, synchronize that in all, at all, and we don't want that positional information, so we just go ahead and zero it out. Next, we go ahead and we apply globals. So uh, here we say render uh, shader bind globals. Uh, we get the ID of the shader here. We set uh, the um, uniform by index for the projection matrix. Um, and then we go ahead and we set the view matrix. And then we apply the globals, all right? So this is all the stuff that the material system is sort of autom automating for us. Um, we don't have that here. We don't, we don't need the material system to do that for us, but we do have to do this manually here. Uh, we also do need to bind the instance because we do have one uh, instance descriptor that we need to be updated. So we bind uh, the skybox's instance ID and we haven't really gotten to um, filling out our skybox yet. So that, that is coming. Uh, but uh, basically we, um, we bind the skybox instance ID. We set the cube map um, to the transfer to the um, the cube map uh, that we have set up in um, our texture map set up in the skybox. So we, uh, we, we set that uniform. And then uh, we go ahead and do our needs update calculation. So uh, is the skybox's render frame number the, sa um, the same as, um, as frame number? Um, and then do apply instance. So uh, passing that needs update there. And then we go ahead and make sure that the frame number is synchronized. And finally, last but not least, uh, we draw it and end the render pass. So um, we just call render draw geometry, um, which is basically just gonna be our cube geometry. We'll see that created once we actually get uh, to the application. So uh, once we have completed that loop, uh, we come down here and we return true. And that's it. Uh, that's all there is to our view. So it's, it's very similar to the other views that we've seen thus far. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it needs to work slightly different. So we needed a, uh, a custom one to be able to handle that for us. All right, so um, let's see. We probably should go ahead and do the render view system update first. So we'll say render view system. And I believe we actually only need to modify the C file for this. So um, at the top, we need to include, oops. Ah, what happened? Um, renderer views uh, skybox. So we need to um, include that. And then we can come down to where we are setting up our function pointers. And we're just gonna add another case here to say else if uh, this is a skybox, we are going to set the skybox function pointers. Uh, and then the only other thing is I noticed uh, down here at the bottom uh, on build packet, uh, we actually had a couple of um, this error message doesn't really make sense. Um, so uh, what this really should say is requires a valid pointer um, to data. All right. Uh, and That should be it. So uh, that is it for our render view system. Uh, let's see, so let's take a quick look at our shader system because there are some, did we already, let me double check and make sure that we, I think we actually already updated this, come to think of it. No, we have not. So um, this use instances and locals, um, these things can go away uh, because we're not gonna track that anymore. Uh, and I think uh, the only other change that we need to make here, I believe, 
is actually I think that's it so we actually just don't need those two properties anymore uh, because we are going to be maintaining counts of that so we actually don't need that anymore um, that does mean that we're going to have to make a change on the back side of that uh, because now um, some of this is going to be incorrect so if we come down here to the first place we have errors uh, we are setting out shader use instances and locals we are going to get rid of that uh, let's see uh, the next place is going to be our render shader create, which I think is probably going to be down here where this other error is. Maybe not. Um, shader create. Uh, let's see. Right. So we are actually going to have to make a change to the renderer uh, because we are actually going to need to pass config to that. So this is actually going to break this for now, but we're going to fix it when we get back to uh, the renderer front end. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change anyway. Um, we need to actually pass along the config to the shader create. So we definitely are going to need that. Um, in add sampler, we are going to make a minor change to this. So we have this uh, check here to say uh, if we're trying to use an instance and we're not using instances, this check can't exist anymore. So we can actually get rid of that one uh, because we don't have a flag that says whether or not we use instances. Um, we're just gonna kind of leave it up to the caller to know um, how that should work. And if it's misconfigured, then it's gonna throw errors. Uh, and then down here, we also have somewhere um, I think it was under uniform add. It's probably this last error down here. Uh, let's see, we're entry scope. Yeah, here we go. So here's the entry scope. We're doing a check against use locals. Uh, that check doesn't exist anymore, so we can get rid of that. Uh, and that is it for the shader system. Uh, the texture system is also going to need an update to be able to load queued maps. So uh, let's go ahead and probably change that next um, because I think that makes the most sense to handle next. So we will start uh, with, do we need to make any changes to the H file? I think the only thing that we need to do is actually just add a new function. So um, right now we have a acquire and then acquire writable. And we actually need something for acquire cube. Uh, and this just tells us how to actually treat the texture that we're loading because we need to load cube maps a little bit differently. And so um, I've put in a lot of comments here um, that sort of indicate how you actually load a cube map uh, using this texture. So uh, you load, you wind up loading six textures. So we take the name that's passed here and we append underscore F underscore B underscore U underscore D underscore R and L for front, back, up, down, left, and right, respectively. And uh, this automatically builds out those file names and loads those resources and combines them all into a single cube map texture. Uh, and that texture is what gets returned here. So um, we need to add this. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go to the definition of writable, because it needs to be right above that. And we'll go ahead and fill this out. So um, I guess the, there are a couple of other things that we're gonna have to do in addition to that. So let's start at the top. So we have our function definitions here. So right now we have a uh, load texture, which just loads a standard uh, texture. We need something to load cube textures because again, this handles that a little bit differently. And the main difference here is we take the base name and then we pass uh, a array of six texture names and then um, a pointer to a texture. So uh, this is what we're gonna wind up calling um, to load a cube texture. 
So uh, our texture system acquire is going to need a small update. So let's see. Um, Actually, before we do that, there is one more update I missed up here at the top. We have to actually update uh, process texture reference. So um, our process texture reference uh, is actually now also going to take, in addition to name, uh, it's also going to take a texture type. So if we go to the definition of that, uh, that's going to be down here at the bottom. Um, we'll go ahead and add that there. And we'll come back to that. All right, uh, so uh, back to acquire. So um, when we're processing our texture reference here, uh, we need to pass texture type 2D. And that's okay to hard code here because we're just acquiring a standard texture. Um, likewise, uh, what we're actually going to want to do um, for the acquire for a cube map is going to be uh, basically the same thing. Um, it's just going to wind up being instead of uh, texture type 2D, it's going to be texture type cube. And that actually should be it, I believe. Um, we should probably also update these Acquire cube, acquire cube. Uh, that should be fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, that should be all we need to do for um, for that. Uh, the the biggest set of changes is actually going to wind up being um, the changes to this process texture reference. Uh, one more thing that we need to do is uh, when we are Let's see, uh, when we're coming down here and we're acquiring a writable texture, uh, we need to set the texture type in here. So right underneath uh, ID, we are going to set the texture type to uh, texture type 2D, because if we don't do that, um, bad things will happen. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's see, process texture reference here. Uh, this is going to take uh, a texture type 2D as well. All right, so that should be it for acquire uh, writable. And uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, in our, oh, you know what? Uh, we probably also ought to wrap internal. Let's say uh, texture type equals type 2D there for wrap internal. Um, Shouldn't need to do it there. These are, uh, okay, so creating the default textures, uh, we're actually going to want to set this here as well. So after flags, we're going to set um, the texture type to texture type 2D. So we're gonna do that for the default texture, the default diffuse texture, the default specular texture, and the default normal texture. All right, um, and that way those all have the proper um, texture associated with them. Uh, all right, so the next thing that we have is we have this load texture function, which is responsible for loading a single texture. However, uh, we actually need a different version of that to handle our cube texture. So we've already uh, sort of declared this up top, now we need to define it. So we have our load cube textures. And basically the way that this is going to work is uh, it's going to loop through the six textures that we have and load them individually as resources and then combine them all at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and loop six and we are going to load um, our resource. So we have our resource params that we're creating here and we're setting flip, flip y to false. Then we have our image resource here, and we are calling image source uh, resource system load. Um, we're loading an image here. We are taking texture names sub i, okay. Um, and of course, if we fail at any point, we're going to bleat about it um, and return false. 
So we go ahead and load the resource there. And then um, next we basically have this check to see whether or not we have pixel data. So if we do, we're gonna set the um, width, height, channel count, flags and generation. Um, we're gonna take a copy of the name, the image size. Uh, we're gonna allocate some memory for um, uh, the pixels if we do not have that. If we do have pixels, in other words, we have uh, something that's actually um, that's actually loaded. Uh, what we're going to do is actually, did I? Right. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. So um, we are going to verify that all the textures are the same size. So we're going to take um, the resource data width and compare it to the texture width. And the same for the height and the same for the camp, the channel count. So these need to be consistent across the board or otherwise a cube map won't work. Because obviously if it's a cube, it has to be the, the same dimensions on all six sides. So uh, we don't want different resolution maps on different sides. It's gonna do weird things with the memory. And I don't even think you can actually do that. I've never tried it, nor would I ever think of trying it because um, it just seems like a bad idea. So um, we go ahead and verify that all textures are the same size. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the loaded pixels from uh, that particular image and we're going to copy it to the relevant portion of the, um, the pixels array. So uh, the pixels array basically is, uh, is created here to be the size of six images. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, the start of the pixel array uh, plus the image size times I, which is gonna give us an offset into that array for the current index that we're at. We are then going to copy the resource data pixels at the image size to that. So we're basically going to slam all of this data um, into a single array. And then uh, we'll go ahead and clean up the data for this particular resource. So we say system resource unload, and we unload that particular resource. Once we have gone through all six images, then we combine them at the end. So we say render texture create, we pass the final pixel array, uh, and then we pass T, which is already gonna have the texture type of cube map uh, somewhere here. Do we actually set that anywhere? I think we actually set it, uh, we'll set it when we call this actually. So um, by then the texture type should be set uh, and we'll, we'll double check that here in a second. Uh, but then uh, once we actually create that, uh, we go ahead and we free the pixels. Uh, we're not actually gonna hang on to the pixel data for this. So we wanna make sure that we free up that memory to, so that we don't leak it. And we uh, zero that out and return true. So this is how we load cube textures, right? We basically just load six textures and jam them into one. All right, uh, so what we're actually gonna have to do is we're gonna have to modify our load texture as well because it now is going to require um, parameters. So the first thing that we're gonna do before trying to load the resource is we are going to create um, resource parameters and this time we're gonna set flip Y to true because for every other texture type, we do want to flip that. And we're going to pass the address of params in our resource system load here. And uh, that should be it uh, as far as that is concerned. So the next bit is this proce process texture reference. Uh, so we've already added the texture type here. And so now what we need to do is we need to actually apply that type. So if we come down here uh, and let's see, we create our new texture. Just gotta find where that is. Create new texture. So here we have um, our texture um, being grabbed right here. We just need to set the texture type right here. So whenever we load that, we're setting the type of the texture there. Um, and then we have uh, this down here where we're actually calling this load texture. Um, and this actually uh, is not completely what we're always gonna wanna do. So uh, what we're gonna wanna do is actually wrap this in a check. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if the texture type is a cube map, then we're gonna do one thing. Otherwise, we are going to uh, come down here and wrap this load texture in that else, right? Uh, and then 
what we're going to do in the case of a cube map is we are going to set up a new array of six uh, texture names. And this is the order that we are going to load these in. So we're going to load it in uh, this order. We're going to load right, then left, then up, then down, then front, then back. The order of this absolutely does matter. Um, and so we are going to uh, go ahead and load that uh, in that order. And then instead of calling uh, load textures, we're going to say load cube textures, passing our texture names. And then of course, if that fails, we're going to bleat about it and return false. Um, otherwise, we're just going to continue as normal, set the ID and so forth. So um, this is, I believe, everything we need to do for our texture system, uh, which is good. Um, so it seems like a lot of code, but it's actually, um, it's kind of just spread out. Uh, it's not a whole heck of a lot uh, to worry about. Okay. Um, so I think probably the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're probably going to want to update the Vulkan backend next um, because I think it doesn't really make sense to update the front end until we've actually done the Vulkan backend. So uh, let's go to backend, Vulkan backend. And we're doing the shader create, shader create, here we go. Uh, we are going to be adding one additional property um, and that's going to be uh, right in front of render pass. Uh, it's going to be the shader config. So we're just gonna pass a pointer or a constant pointer to that. And uh, now we'll go into the C file. So uh, Vulkan backend.c and shader create. And we'll add that right in front of the render pass, just like we did in the H file. And uh, now comes sort of our massive list of updates. So um, I think we'll just. Uh, We'll actually start up here at uh, the top um, because there's actually one thing that we need to change in the shutdown. So uh, we are actually going in here and destroying these render targets, um, and we actually don't uh, we actually don't need to do that anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that. And uh, let's see. The next thing is uh, our render pass. Again, uh, here we go. So uh, this actually needs a, uh, a slight update to it. So with our do clear color, um, we actually need an else clause here uh, because we need to change this um, to still increment the clear value count, uh, but we're not gonna bother copying the data because it'll be ignored. So um, even though we may not actually be doing a clear, we still need to provide clear data um, so that it lines up uh, in the array versus the, the clear info versus the clear uh, count. Uh, let's see. So the next thing that we want to do is in our uh, render pass create, um, when we're creating our uh, depth attachment, we need to make a small adjustment to the load op. So um, right now, we're basically just saying, uh, if we are clearing the depth, um, use um, load op clear, otherwise use load op load. Um, and this is not always necessarily what we're gonna want. So um, what we're actually gonna want is to also check the previous pass, if there's a previous pass. So we're gonna replace this line with a check also to say, if we have a previous pass, then do that. Um, if we do not have a previous pass, then we say we just don't care um, what happens with it. Okay, so um, the next thing that we need to do is uh, go to texture create. And instead of uh, in Vulkan image create, instead of passing image type uh, 2D, we need to say T type. Uh, we're going to have to make that change one more time. So uh, the next one is going to be under create writable, which is right here. We're going to change that over as well to use the T type. 
Uh, and then uh, we're also going to need to do that in resize. So right there. Um, and then also when we do transition layouts um, and write data, uh, let's see, transition layouts, uh, we are gonna need to add uh, that parameter right after context there. And then uh, copy from buffer, we are going to add that before image there. Uh, whoops, we forgot a comma here. And then uh, transition layout, uh, we're also gonna need to add that after context. And I think uh, I think that is it for the, uh, the texture type stuff. So uh, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna need to take a look for these binding indexes right here, because uh, these things are actually not um, not accurate anymore. So this binding index UBO and binding index sampler, uh, we're always hard coding those to zero and one right now, uh, and we don't actually want to do that anymore. So we're gonna get rid of those. And uh, our Vulkan renderer shader create, um, we are actually going to, uh, actually we've already added our configuration here. Uh, so that should be good to go. Uh, and then a little bit further down, uh, we, let's see. So a little bit further down, we zero out our arrays and counts. Um, and what we need to actually do as well is we need to set the sampler binding index to um, invalid ID for the first and second descriptor sets. Um, because we may or may not actually have samplers. So we need to start those off um, as uh, invalid IDs. Uh, next, after our attributes array, uh, here is where we're actually going to start dealing with uh, some of the, the uniform stuff, right? So we're gonna get some uniform counts. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our out shader um, counts. We're gonna set all the counts to zero and we're gonna get the total number of uniforms we have. We're gonna go through each uniform, take a look at its scope. So it'll be global, instance, or local. And then for each one of these, uh, we're gonna say, okay, for global, is it a sampler? If it is, increment the global sampler count. Otherwise, it's a uniform. Uh, same thing is gonna be true for the instance. So is it a sampler? Increment the sampler, uh, the instance uniform sampler count, otherwise just the instance uniform count, or otherwise if it's local, uh, we're going to increment the local uniform count. So we have those uh, counts there that we are gonna use. And then uh, a little bit further down is where we uh, actually start setting up the uh, global descriptor sets. So uh, right now we are just sort of using these hard-coded um, indices and we don't actually wanna do that anymore. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's see, global descriptor set config. In fact, I am going to, I think, uh, let's see. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and remove all of this because we're actually gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to redo this stuff anyways. So um, let's go ahead and just sort of re-implement this uh, using, um, using our dynamic um, binding indices. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to check to see if our global uniform count or our global uniform sampler count is greater than zero. If so, um, then we can go ahead and start setting up our global descriptor sets. And so um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna say, okay, well, if we have gl a global uniform count greater than zero, then we have a global UBO that we're actually gonna need. So we're gonna set up a binding index for that and we're gonna set up our bindings for that. So this is the same bindings logic that we had before. It's just we're conditionally doing it now based on these counts that we've retrieved earlier. The next thing um, is we're going to check um, 
for samplers. So here's our UBO um, for our regular uniforms. Uh, here is for our samplers. So we're going to check, do we have um, a sampler count greater than zero? If we do, go ahead and set up the binding index for that and uh, set up the bindings for that. So uh, we might wind up with one or the other of these uh, or both or none, technically. Um, and so this allows us to be a lot more flexible than what we had uh, before. And so uh, finally, what we will do is we'll come down here and we will um, increase the descriptor set counter uh, by one. And so um, what we're dealing with here is we have our global descriptor set. So um, we only get in here if one of these things is true. So we are going to have this descriptor set one way or the other. And then um, within that, we'll have our bindings. And so uh, here we'll increment our set counter. And so that is for the global. And uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to want to do basically the same thing for instances. So ah, we're going to come down here and check first, uh, do we have an instance uniform count greater than zero? or an instance sampler count greater than zero. And if we do, um, we are going to go ahead and create a descriptor set for that. If, um, once again, and I'm actually just gonna paste this whole thing here because it's literally the same logic as up here. So if we have uh, a instance uniform count greater than zero, then we're gonna set up uh, the UBO bindings for that. If we have a instance sampler count greater than zero, then we'll, sign up, uh, we'll set up the bindings for that. And then we'll go ahead and increment the set counter finally here. All right, uh, let's see. So finally, uh, before we return true, we actually need to keep a copy of the config call node. So we just copy that over here and then we are done with the creation of that. So uh, the next thing that we need is uh, we need to look at our initialize because we had some of this uniform logic in here and now we no longer want to actually do that. So this section here where we're processing uh, uniforms, that's attributes, processing uniforms. So this whole section is now done for us. We no longer need that. That is actually done for us when we create the shader. So it cleans that up a little bit. Uh, let's see, so a little bit further down, it uh, looks like we have an error when we are doing our graphics pipeline create because we now require a call mode to be passed to that. So if you recall, that is right after the scissor. So we say s config call mode. So we pass that through. Uh, let's see, okay. So our shader apply instance is going to need an update. I think that's our next error here. So uh, we are doing a check here to say, uh, do we have instances that check is, well, it's now rubbish um, because we don't actually do that anymore. So um, now we just say, uh, we go ahead and grab our internal data um, and continue from there. Now, um, it should be noted that, uh, actually, you know what? Let's not get rid of that because actually there is a way that we can actually do this. So let's, let's modify this somewhat. So we have our internal. Instead of checking this, let's go ahead and say if internal uh, instance uniform count uh, is less than one or no, and uh, internal uh, instance uniform sampler count is less than one. Right, so this basically replaces that Boolean that we had there. So if both of these things are true, then we don't have any instances. Um, so then we can say, we don't use instances, right? Uh, so that uh, simplifies that a little bit. Uh, okay, so the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is right here where we are setting our descriptors uh, we are going to want to wrap this in a check. Uh, let's say uh, right here. Let's do it right here. So we'll say if 
internal uh, instance uniform count is greater than zero, because we only want to do this if we actually have um, instance uniforms. And we will end that check here. So that should bump that in. So this should only be done if we actually have um, an instance uh, to deal with, right? So we only we only want to update uh, a UBO or, or do anything with our UBO if we actually have instance um, uniforms. If we don't, we shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so we have that. Um, Let's see. So samplers will always be in the binding. This is no longer true. Uh, so we can't actually use this anymore. And in fact, um, this comment should probably be up here. And then uh, we actually want to change this check here because this should be internal instance uniform sampler count. And if that's greater than zero, then we want to do this. Um, and then, uh, let's see, we're going to use uh, the sampler count is going to come from the internal config uh, descriptor sets, uh, descriptor set index instance bindings. And then instead of this hard coded index sampler, um, we actually need to pull the binding index. So we're going to do uh, U8 sampler binding index, and we're going to set that equal to uh, internal internal uh, config descriptor sets uh, descriptor set index instance uh, sampler binding index, and then we can take this sampler binding index and use that here. And that uh, should fix that. Uh, let's see. So acquire resources is also probably going to need an update. Let's find that. So here we are. Uh, this is actually going to wind up being pretty dang similar to what we just did. So uh, U8 sampler binding uh, binding index equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be uh, internal um, ah, internal, conf I can't type today, uh, descriptor sets, and then we're also going to want to use descriptor set index instance sampler binding index, and then we'll use sampler binding index here. Uh, that should fix that. Um, and then one small change here, uh, we have the uh, U64 size. It's possible that um, we're not gonna have a UBO at all that's gonna be used. So uh, we also need to say if size is greater than zero, right? Because if it's not, uh, if the size is zero, then we shouldn't even be setting up uh, this, this buffer, right? Because you can't have a buffer that's a zero size. So we need to take that into account as well. And then finally, there's one more error down here, and I think I know what this one is. I think this has to do with the resource loader. Um, yeah, so resource system load. This just needs zero pass to the params. <clears throat> okay. So that is our backend. Uh, that is all the backend changes that we need to make. So now let's go to the front end. And the front end, um, thankfully, does not need very many changes at all. So um, in fact, uh, all we actually need to do, um, at least in the H file of the front end, is when we create a shader, we need to pass along a constant pointer to the shader config. And I'm just going to copy this comment that I had elsewhere. And uh, that is it for the H file there. So now we need to do uh, shader creates. And we need to update this. 
to take in the shader config. Um, and the shader config is, of course, just going to pass config to the back end, which already has that. All right. Uh, and then, really, from here, um, we just have uh, to add our skybox stuff. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll go all the way to the top. We'll start at the top like we normally do. So uh, our render system state, uh, right below back end, we are going to have our skybox shader ID added alongside our material ID and our, um, or our material shader ID rather in our uh, UI shader ID where we uh, are creating our render passes. Uh, I'm gonna add one here too. So we're gonna have a skybox render pass. And again, we're gonna put a to-do on that, that that needs to be configurable. Uh, so the next thing is going to be uh, where we're setting up the render backend config. So we have here um, our render pass count that is now gonna be three. And uh, our pass configs is now going to be three as well. We are going to have a new name here for our skybox render pass name. So we're going to do that first. And our skybox is actually going to be the very first thing that we render because we want our skybox to appear behind the scene. So it needs to be actually the first thing in line to be rendered. So uh, what we're actually going to do is I'm going to copy this one and bump this down and paste here and we are going to change this to skybox render pass name uh, the previous name is going to be zero the next name is going to be world render pass name uh, the render area is going to be same defaults render clear color same defaults uh, but the only thing that we're going to actually clear here is just the color buffer um, and that should be all that we need to do because we're not actually gonna use the depth buffer in this. So uh, since this is the first one, this now needs to be changed to the second one and this needs to be changed to the third one. And uh, we also now have a previous name that's here. So we need the skybox name to be the previous one here. Um, And what we actually want to do is we do not want to clear the color on this one. We only want to clear the depth stencil. So we're only going to clear the color on the skybox. We're only going to clear the depth here. And then we're not going to clear anything on the UI pass. So that should be that. I think I've got that right. It looks right. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, basically create a, um, a copy of what we have here for the world render pass, except it's going to be the skybox render pass. So we're going to use the skybox render pass name. Uh, we are going to uh, set the render target count to window render target. So this is going to operate almost exactly like the world render pass. Um, and then the targets are going to be the same thing as the world render pass actually uses. Okay. So... The next thing that we're going to do is right here where we're updating the dimensions, we're going to have to add another one for the, oops, that should be the skybox, skybox render pass dimensions. Uh, let's see. So we have our critical init here, which actually it looks like those are bleating for some reason. Um, and I suspect that's the resource system load needs params. So let's see resource type, so it's actually going to need to be here and here to fix those. Um, we need to load the built-in skybox shader. So skybox, uh, let's see, um, built-in shader name skybox, resource type shader, config resource. We're going to do that here, just reuse the same one, uh, built-in skybox shader. Uh, here we go ahead and grab the resource data, 
shader system creates. Uh, we're going to change this to skybox. Uh, let's see, resource system unload. Uh, this is going to be skybox shader ID. And then a built in shader name skybox there. So load the skybox shader. Uh, okay, and we've already fixed these guys, so that should be good. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually uh, in our shutdown, we need to destroy our render targets. So we're just going to add here uh, another call to render target destroy. Um, destroying our skybox uh, targets here. So um, that is why we remove this from the back end because this has already been done on the front end. Uh, let's see. So shader create. I think we already have done all the updates we need for there. So yeah, that's actually done. Um, we need to update uh, regenerate render targets. So right now we are destroying our render targets for the world and UI render pass. So we also need to do this for the skybox render pass. So we have that. Uh, and then we need to regenerate for the skybox render targets. So we're going to do that first, just to kind of keep things in order. Uh, so that should be good to go. And actually, I think that's actually all we need to do on the render front end. So now we actually have um, our render pass set up and created uh, and our render targets as well. Okay, so we're nearing the home stretch here. Uh, I think the only thing we actually have to do is update uh, some stuff in our application. So uh, let's go to application.c, go to the top here, and we will uh, first and foremost take a look here uh, and go into our application state. We actually need to add Let's do right above the meshes, but within the temporary block because this is going to be very temporary. Uh, so we'll say skybox, and we'll call this SB, just for skybox, right? Uh, nice and simple. So we're going to um, hold our skybox here. Uh, eventually, once we have a scene and stuff, uh, we won't have to do this. But for now, this is what we got to do. Uh, let's see. So the next thing we need to do is go to application create and uh, where we are setting up our render passes or our render views rather uh, we need to load up uh, a render view config for our skybox view so um, this is pretty much exact same thing um, as our world uh, the only difference is, is we are using the skybox data instead so it's pretty much the same thing it's just a different view type uh, different name, different uh, render pass name, but uh, otherwise it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so uh, the only other thing that we're going to need to do now is uh, we're going to have to come into our temp section and we're going to have to load up a skybox. So we're going to do this uh, before we actually set up uh, the mesh count. So I'm just going to put a comment here, world meshes. And we're going to do our skybox load right here. So uh, basically, we're going to get a texture map, um, and we're going to get a pointer to the uh, skybox cube map. Uh, we're going to set the uh, the filters on that because uh, we haven't actually we're not actually doing this correctly yet. We're sort of hacking this in place just to kind of get it to work for now. Um, our cube map use is going to be uh, cube map. And then we're going to say uh, renderer texture map acquire resources so that we have our resources for that. Again, we don't have the, um, the material uh, system to do this for us, so we have to do this manually. Um, now we're going to acquire the cube texture. Uh, we're going to acquire a geometry config for the cube. So we're just going to create a 10 by 10 by 10 cube, call it skybox cube. Um, we are going to clear out the material name because we don't actually even want to use a default material for this. We, uh, we want no material name whatsoever. And then um, we are going to uh, go ahead and uh, set the geometry pointer 
to uh, the result of geometry system acquired from config. We're going to pass the skybox uh, cube config and we are going to auto release this. We're going to set the frame number to invalid uh, U64, just like we've done um, for the materials and the shaders. Um, we're going to get a pointer to the skybox shader. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, set up our uh, our texture map, which is just going to be an array of one. Um, and then we're going to uh, acquire the instance resources for that. Um, and we're going to store that off in the instance ID of the skybox. Um, and we're going to pass along the maps, right? So this is what uh, actually loads um, uh, those samplers and whatnot for us. Okay, so uh, that is that. Uh, let's see. So a couple of things we're going to have to fix in here uh, is some more re resource loading stuff. Uh, let's see. So we have our cubes. Those are fine, but we're reloading our meshes in. Uh, let's see. Where is right here? So our resource system load. This is bleating because we need a zero here for params. Um, and we're also going to need that same thing here. So we've got that. And then uh, last but not least, we are going to have to update our packets uh, to actually uh, work with our new view. So right down here where we're doing our packet count, we're gonna change this to three, change the size of the views array to three. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna do instead of world is we are going to do skybox. And we're going to build the, um, the packet for that based off of the skybox view. And this is gonna be the first one in line, which means this needs to be the second and this needs to be the third. And last but not least, um, we, we actually need to create something to properly destroy resources that our skybox is actually um, holding on to. So uh, we need to release our texture map resources. So um, in our application run towards the bottom here where we're actually shutting down all this stuff, uh, right after we do shader system shutdown. So right here, we're gonna insert a temporary block of code. Uh, for render texture map release resources. If we don't do this, we're going to get a error on shutdown. So um, with all of this, we are now ready to build the application. So let's just make sure that we didn't miss anything. Okay, it looks like we missed one thing. Um, right, we didn't actually pass params through here. So let's build that. Ooh, looks like we have a couple things that we missed. Shader system, create. So we have, did we not pass the config? Oh, I passed it in the wrong order. This config should be here, I think, yeah. Uh, what did we miss here? Process texture reference. Texture system release. Oh, I guess this doesn't really matter. So we'll say texture type 2D. Uh, Cause when we're releasing, we don't really care. Um, let's build that. Oh, did I? Yeah, I put that in the wrong spot. Okay. Uh, why, why is it complaining now? Texture type 2D. On a release, skip load. What is this complaining about? Too few arguments in function call. What am I missing here? So we have the name, type, reference diff, auto release, skip load, and ID. Expected six have five. That's not even the same thing. Okay, maybe it's just tripping. Uh, we'll say texture type 2D here. Yeah, okay, apparently it was just 
just tripping. Okay. So uh, now we've built successfully, but there is one more thing that we actually have to do before we run because we haven't actually updated things to be able to build our shaders yet. So uh, we need post build. Uh, we'll do the SH version first because we're on Linux. So uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna paste this in because I don't feel like coding this live. So we're just gonna add stuff for our Skybox shader, uh, vert and frag. So we have that. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the Windows version of that as well. So we need the post, post build.bat. We're gonna add that here at the end. So we have our Skybox shader for that. Um, and I also noticed that the Mac OS one hadn't been updated uh, in a while. So we want post build Mac OS. And this one only has uh, the built-in material shader, um, which frankly is just wrong. Um, so really what it needs is the uh, UI shader and the Skybox shader added. So that should fix uh, that on that platform as well. And now I think we should be able to run our task post build. And we see here that we built successfully. So now we should be able to run and hopefully not get any errors. Ah, no such luck. Uh, let's see. Copy buffer to image P regions, which exceeds the buffer size. So what are we trying to, where are we actually doing this? Okay, so let me see. What did I miss? Uh, let's see, so we have our type here. Um, oh, what am I missing? Vulcan image C. This is the only place we're doing that. Um, we've added this here. So where are we actually copying from? Because apparently our Apparently our call stack is just messed up here somewhere. So the only thing that's actually calling this function is here for where we write data. And the only place that we are calling that, actually there's a couple places. Um, so that's just the function pointer. So this is the only thing that actually calls that. Did I miss something here? Did I miss something in here? Uh, all we had to do here was type. And then we write texture data. Pixels. I wonder if let me see something if we have uh, let's see front end so are we actually calling this anywhere uh, let's see I don't see anywhere that's actually calling that
Hmm. Let's see, do we get any other errors up here that might give it away as to what it is? Not really. So what buffer was it actually trying to copy from is the question. Maybe the staging buffer is wrong. Trying to copy this many bytes plus zero offset to this buffer, which exceeds the VK buffer size. I feel like this has got to be our cube map doing something wrong. So we're loading our textures here. Render texture, create pixels. This all seems fine. I wish I knew which buffer this was. The source buffer must be large enough to contain all buffer locations that are accessed according to the buffer. So it's the source buffer. So if we go, that was what, an Vulcan image? Copy buffer to image. So the source buffer is this first one. So we have buffer, so that's this one. So it's saying the source buffer isn't large enough. Texture type image. So it's the staging buffer it's saying it's not large enough. Why would the staging buffer not be large enough? Create image size. I see. Okay. Yeah. It's actually not large enough. So this isn't taking cube map cube maps into account. So uh, what this should actually be is we should also multiply this against uh, T type. Um, and if it's texture, whoops, texture type cube, uh, then it should be times six, otherwise it should be times one. Uh, because otherwise there's not enough room here to hold all that data. That's probably what the issue is. Okay, so cancel out of that. Let me just clean and rebuild. Okay, let's run.
Okay, looks good so far. If we look up, we should see white, yes. So I think we have our skybox. And if we go here, we can see that we have a skybox. And if we look around, we can see that uh, we can look down and around and all over the place. And we see that our skybox never really moves. Even if we move our camera, uh, the skybox stays uh, always where it is, giving us the sort of perception that um, this stuff is really far away. Now, I realize this is kind of not a great image to use for this. We are going to be um, eventually creating a much better uh, skybox image to use for this, but um, this just made it very easy to you know, sort of tell what direction you're facing and all that. So um, this is uh, this is it for this video. I know this one's actually gone on for uh, quite a while. So, uh, you know, we're going to end this here. But, uh, you know, this is a pretty big um, thing uh, that we've done here. You know, we've added another um, decently sized uh, feature to this. So we are going to be extending this. Uh, we are going to be adding more and more capability to it um, in the future, but at least now uh, we've enhanced things um, more so on the back end to make things more flexible in terms of how textures are loaded um, and used. And now we have support for cube maps, which can also be used for other stuff besides just, um, just skyboxes. So with all that said, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, being here and following along with the series. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're learning a lot. And um, if you haven't uh, already, please uh, consider subscribing. Uh, toss the video a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, go ahead and hit the little bell icon there if you haven't already to get notified as to when new videos in this or other series that I have going drops. And I will see you guys next time.